Hey guys, this week only go to SorgatronMedia.com slash store where any IWC or RWA DVD that you buy, you get a free DVD, including if you get IWC, it's Ray Rowe versus Samoa Joe, the classic from Summer Sizzler 4. If you buy RWA, you're going to get the first ever cage match at Aggression 2. Go check it out. SorgatronMedia.com slash store. Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show 327. Mad Mike is here, live, in the studio, in Pittsburgh. It's going to get crazy as we talk about indie wrestling, raw, no holds barred, crazy stuff, why Maxine doesn't even matter, all that and more. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Mayhem Show 327 from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Sorgatron here, uh, hosting as usual. We got a little bit of a uh, rearrangement of people here, but still on the couch as always. Where else would he be? Is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com, at Chachi says on Twitter. How you doing, Chach? I am doing well. Good. Hey, listen. This what? is my couch. Okay. This is not your couch. This is my couch. Okay. So I will sit here every Tuesday night unless a medical emergency or work emergency comes up as it has in the past. What about that guy? That guy is close to becoming a host. Who's that guy? Wrestling- I am a host. Of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. He came out of retirement for tonight and tonight only. <laughs> it's what? Hall of Fame member... Mad Mike. I should. I, where's okay, my ring? Claire. Where's my ring? We don't have rings. No. <laughs> I don't get a fucking ring? No. Yeah, I'm sorry. Aw. Hi, Mayhem Universe. It's Mad Mike, <laughs> and uh, this is the show that's not going to suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it, it, ring. it probably will. Oh my god. I, oh, I'm, got- I'm being presented a ring. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me fix it. <laughs> Josh is proposing. There we go. Uh-oh. This is your, uh, let me make this an M for you. No one else is doing it, really? (laughs) You get half an M. (laughs) There you go. There's your your Hall of Fame ring. Yeah! (laughs) Hall of Famer, bitch! There he is, also joining us from Corpus Christi, Texas, where he is not attending the live SmackDown of the Bash Night right now. The Wrestlefans? What? Did you just say SmackDown of the Bash? Yes. 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 No? Yes. Okay then. That, yeah, I'm not. Because what? Well, honestly, yes, it's right there. Yes, it's maybe like a five minute drive away. But you know what? It's Wrestling Mayhem Show night. That's what I got to say to that. All right. Also joining us here is the Riz. Fuck you, Wrestle Fan. Good enough <laughs> for me. This is the Wrestling hey. Mayhem Show, of course, where we get wrestling and we get mayhemy. What? No. What? We are fans of wrestling and we like to share our fandom and have fun uh, watching wrestling, talking about wrestling, and whatever else may come up. Uh, you can find out more about us over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can watch or listen to this show on your Roku box and the Blip TV app on Blip TV itself iTunes, Roku, Stitcher. I said Roku twice. Yes, I did, because it's very important. Buy our um, app. Buy our app as well. We're, I'm not that far. I'm not that far. Hey, make sure, if you're listening to us, even if you're not listening to us on any of those services, go to iTunes, go to YouTube.com uh, slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Look us up. Uh, put a review. Put stars. Like us. Plus us. Whatever it is. Hate us. Share right. it with your friends that are also into wrestling and you think they're going to get our kind of humor and like what we talk about, go ahead and share it with them. Spread the love. We want to grow the Mayhem Nation. Spread and the love. Need, spread the hate. We don't care. We don't, don't discriminate. Ooh. That rhymed. Ooh. Nice spread job. the love. Spread the hate. In a previous yeah. life, life I may have been a rapper. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but definitely not and this one. he says one. that in the widest way possible. Yes, it also <laughs> drops a line to good times. Good times! At WrestlingMayhemShow.com, of course. Uh, you can also uh, drop a line to 412-206-WMS0. That is the hotline. Leave us a message about any thoughts you have. Um, 
<laughs> it's coming now for one of the other computers, and I don't know which one. Um, also, the WMS Gold app links and extras, extra content, extra video content we don't put anywhere else. Uh, go check that out. Uh, it's in your iOS app store or Amazon app store. Um, and nobody showed it off, but that's okay. Yeah, I got it right. I had it, but I didn't. I was doing we it while we were trying we to. We weren't the there that. There it is. All right. so I got yelled at. Go. You get yelled yeah. at. There we're, it we're is. There go yet. check it out, guys. You can't yell at me. I'm a fucking Hall of Famer. I got a ring. Did you not listen last week? I did. <laughs> I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm a Hall of Famer. <laughs> I do whatever the fuck I I'm want. I'm a Hall of Famer. Anyways, See, moving on. Violent. Other than that, other yeah. than that, he's in studios. Mad Mike in studios from the Bronx, New York. Uh, by way of the Bronx, New York, of course. So this is going to be crazy. DJ Lunchbox is... Uh, in the Bronx, New York? No, he DJ is Lunchbox. weird. He is probably robbing my apartment. DJ is Lunchbox weird. is robbing the uh, Bronx, New York apartments <laughs> right now. I don't think he's Hi, robbing. Hi, Jadil does. Or, or something. But you might, you might want to change your bed sheets. Oh. Yeah. I assume that, yeah. You might that's yeah, probably. you might have to like burn them, actually. Yeah, that's probably yeah, a good idea. Yeah, probably there's no, there's no coming back. I'll rain down <laughs> sulfur on them. He is leaving trails of jism everywhere he goes. <laughs> jism. <laughs> wow, okay. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to wear new shoes when I walk. Yes. To my apartment. <laughs> In fact, if you can just hire a cleaning company to clean before you get back. That might be an idea. Hmm. But tell them to bring hazmat suits, because from the doorway... To the windows, on the walls, to the windows, to yes. the wall, to the floor. Window, yeah. <laughs> to the wall. He, he, he jizzed until <laughs> the perspiration reached his nether regions. Holy hell. All Jeez. right. Jism! Wow. Jism! So we like to interact with their fans. I, I threw something out on Facebook. There's this awkward picture that showed up <laughs> on WWE.com for SmackDown. Uh, there is a, a midair Del Rio, and uh, there's Sheamus. Looks like he's trying to violate uh, Dolph Ziggler. So I asked for a co caption contest because I thought it was I thought it looked like the Human Centipede 3. Oh, wow. I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> and and, uh, and let's say it's on the Facebook open group mm. if you guys want to see it. Uh, Alexander Carr said, uh, hashtag boots to asses. You're doing it wrong. Riz, who's right here, uh, says, Hi. Del Rio's so rich he doesn't walk. He levitates. So thank <laughs> you for that. Do you have any captions for that or I, anything I, else? I have one just looking at it right now. Okay. Um, the physics in WWE 13 look awful. Mm. <laughs> that sounds about right. That's a glitch. You can blame THQ for it's that. It's a glitch. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of fun we're having over there. And we like to share a lot of wrestling memes over there. So go join the Facebook open group Wrestling Mayhem Show. And uh, and join us. We, we add just about everybody. So go ahead and do that. And I've seen new people pop in there every week. And uh, that's where a lot of the action is happening for us. And uh, if you have any captions or anything, go ahead and put it on our Facebook page. Put it on uh, Twitter. Uh, hashtag WMS327. And, uh, and and we will correspond, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I would like to uh, take a moment to follow up on last week. Okay. Uh, our dear friend Hector. Uh, Hector left Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I have a um, confession. So, hash, I, thought, no, I thought you were about to say Hector don't left the country because he got deported. <laughs> no, he might have. I don't know. I tried to warn him, though, but uh, competition has been destroyed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hector, Hector was actually my second April Fool's joke. Uh, Shut up. No, I will it wasn't. You, it absolutely uh, wasn't. I'll hurt somebody. I really wanted to think it was. Like, I really <laughs> wish that someone had just made up a fake Mexican Twitter account. No, it wasn't just. <laughs> it wasn't just a Twitter account. It was the email account. It was everything. Yeah, well, fake Mexican Twitter. Yeah, but Twitter Little account. Nickel has a Facebook page. <laughs> So. <laughs> it keeps popping up that I should friend him. Yeah, his birthday's on April first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we had a, we had another one here from uh, uh, Bobby F J Town. Uh, he said uh, Del Rio mistook Sheamus is back for a ski slope. He didn't make it. Oh, mm, really uh, that's unfortunate. I, and I think that's mildly racist. Oh wait, a little bit. The Great White. <laughs> wait for who? For, for, for Sheamus. Sheamus oh, yeah. Because okay. Sheamus looks like snow. We not just that, that received Mexican an email. We just received an email? Yes. Uh, okay, somebody preview that. Well, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's a. Uh, it's entitled, A Little Something for Bo Diggity. Okay. And it's from Tom Bobbitt. Okay, but, okay, but we a, can't read that yet. It's a YouTube video. No, we, we, well, we can't watch that yet because I 
no, no, friends, friends and fans of the Mayhem Show, you guys know I haven't been around in a while, but I still... What? From, what? It's like you're still here every week. Oh, fuck you. It is, actually. I know, but still, I'm not yeah, here, satellite. here. I'm not, like, speaking live to the masses. Yeah, we, we, respond, we respond to your video as if you are here, though, because truly, you haven't left our yes. hearts. <laughs> Wow. I couldn't say it with a straight face. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna taint kick you as soon as the show's over. But, uh, but I have been spreading the gospel of mayhem for months, and I've gotten us a new listener. And last week he emailed the show, and y'all fuckers oh. didn't goddamn read it. You want people to email the show? You know, like, email the show, why are people emailing the show? Oh my god, why are people emailing the show? I get you, I get someone to email the fucking show, and you don't goddamn read it! The email was too entertaining. Um, I don't think we ever sounded like that when asking no, for emails. No, I don't email. think that's the way Well, I mean, it's not, it's not an exact inter interesting interpretation. It's not, that's it's not, it's more for reimagining. That was a great wrestle fan impersonation, though. Thank you. Uh -huh. It's spot on. It's yeah, spot on. I mean, although uh, it's just easy. You have to make it sound like your balls haven't dropped yet. Yeah. Um, well, last night we determined that WrestleFan uh, was negative two months when Raw debuted in 1993. <laughs> yes, you what do you mean? Wow. We, what do you mean you determined that? I just told you. Exactly. Negative we, two months. Yes. Because it's fact. So... He wasn't Wrestle born fan yet. was technically still a fetus. Jism. He was jism. He would, no, he was past. He was seven he months. He was still partial jism. No, no at, at seven you know, months. I don't know your. I'm just trying to call you Wrestle fan jism health class again, man. Yeah, no, I, I can't. He never I, took health class. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, he was seven months. So us calling him a fetus every week is legit. Is that like Sork? Always a remember. Read the one email. Friends? Which because email? Just the one we got last week. The one we got last week? I thought Matt Mike was going to read it. Are you going to read can, it? I can read it, yeah. Okay. Okay. I can read. Someone read the email. He can read. Let's Stop. apologize. Let prove it. Let's, what's, what's the person's name? Um, he is I am Pikey on Twitter. Uh, uh, first off, uh, apologies to I am Pikey for us missing this email last week. Uh, we try not to let it happen. Sometimes stuff slips through the cracks. So well, I it's, a, it's a new email. It's a new email account. If you, I, it's, if I understand. If you want to blame someone though, Russell fan. Russell blame Russell fan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He wasn't even here last week. Who cares? We can so still which blame makes it my him. Fault. Yeah, exactly, Russell fan. Why you, weren't you on top of this? Here, this would not happen. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. So the email has no opening, but I'm just gonna start reading. Mike asked me to put down some thoughts together for you guys. I started watch watching. I started again with Raw last week and have watched everything since. After a ten-year absence, all I can say is the product still sells. It's not as good as it was ten years ago, but it's got me hooked again. I will say, if it wasn't for some of the old faces, I probably wouldn't watch much longer. The new superstars don't hold a candle to the guys that were there when I was watching. Back then, it was Stone Cold, Triple H, The Rock, and Mick Foley with awesome tag teams like the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudley Boys. Back then, just about every match, you knew you were in for some hard-hitting, crazy stuff. I jokingly said to a friend that it's the same exact show with different faces, and that's pretty much true. All the old storylines are just being repeated, but I guess that's the way it's been with wrestling since its inception. The newer guys are good, the matches are good, but to me it's lacking something. Not enough to make me tune out, but I'm still wanting a bit more. I think it's a combination of size and showmanship. All of the new guys are a lot smaller than the superstars of old, and to me, not as charismatic. I do find myself fast-forwarding through some of the matches because I have no interest in watching them. Santino Morella is first on that list. His character is just awful, and the sock on the arm has already been done much better than that. I am digging it again, though. The Divas have certainly been given an, up an upgrade, and Ryback is definitely one to watch. All these matches recently with Jobbers makes me think they're pushing him towards superstar material. The crowd seem to like him, so I think he'll do well. Well, that's all I can think of for now. If you guys like what I've written or want more thoughts after wa after watching more, let me know. Take it easy. I am Pikey. Thank yes. you, sir. Yes, please. I yes. disagree. Send, feed us more. Feed us more. Feed us more. I, I Hungry. More. Feed me Seymour. Excellent. What Excellent. do you disagree with, Riz? I disagree that they're going to push Ryback. I uh -huh. really do. I think they're just like just pretending 
like a Goldberg aspect to it because of his robotic feel to it. So I think they're just going to feed him more until either A, he goes down to FCW, B, they release him for steroids, or C, they just say, uh, or they bring up someone else who can actually wrestle with him and defeat this winning streak he has. So I don't think they're going to try to push him to that level yet. I think you're mistaken, Riz. And I think we're going to get a spot with Ryback on the thousandth Raw that Ryback will come out and destroy more jobbers and he'll grab a microphone and says, feed me more. Then all of a sudden we will hear Goldberg's music and Dwayne Gill will walk out. Honestly, I'm not surprised. The only, I, would, I would not be surprised if that happens. The only reason I'm supporting that is because it's Gilbert. That's the only reason I'll support that. Yes. I think that's what they're building to, because I, that will end his jobber streak, and then he can actually get into a feud. I don't want him to get into a feud. I want no, to because uh, Gilbert is a little bit above jobber. I, I, he is. Well, no, Gilbert is, is the, the king of jobbers. Gilbert is former, like the cage match of champion. squashing jobbers. He is, he he is, no, 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 no. Gilbert's definitely a legendary status at this point. Everybody will explode over something like that. So it, it would be like it, yeah, last it night when uh, Doink. Do, yeah, when Doink came out. I I, I it was out over Doink. it was amazing to see Doink. It was not so amazing to see Doink be the one, uh, the one returning superstar to not win. Well, yeah. Oh, but like it really hurts Doink. It status. doesn't. It doesn't hurt Doink at all. <laughs> Heath Slater winning a match doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, Heath, Heath Slater winning a match against you is only one peg notch higher than you than him losing. Remember, Heath Slater has defeated John Cena before. <gasps> you know, once or twice. That was his old gimmick. Not no, no, he, he was, was always the one-man one band. band. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. just had a better running crew than no one. <laughs> this is true. Nah, nah, no. Sorry. I'm a one-man band. Anyways, so we got this other email that just came in, right? Yes, it's a YouTube video. So it's a YouTube video, and we're going to see if we can do this here. So this is from Tom Bobbitt. Of course, Two. let me get the right one here. Okay. Oh, Bobbitt. diggity. Woo! Wait, where is it? We have to do it after his name, right? Yeah. I thought so. Er. Yeah, it's, it's a new thing since he moved to North Carolina. Oh, shit. I'm through with standing in line and waiting to sing to a file, and all I really want to do is walk that aisle. I want to step into the ring and pin you right to a wow. floor. <laughs> I want to strut around the ring with the spray on the tan. Wait. 
big steel chair. I'll knife and stop you in the throat and have a ten year view with dusty roots. <laughs> Inside my boot, I'll hide my brass knuckles. And every match I'll get flipped over the turnbuckle. It'll be a wonder if I don't wind up dead. Cause I'll always end up with a bloody forehead. Hang out in the dressing room with Tony Schiavone doing interviews. I'll challenge the Fucking Christ. That was amazing. First, first of all, let me just note that when the title of the video says Ric Flair parody of Rockstar, I thought that Ric Flair had a promotion with Rockstar Energy and it was just another commercial <laughs> we were doing in North Carolina. Is there an MP3 of this? I want it. I, will I buy. want to blast this sets. in Harlem. Please. <laughs> hey, hey, I want and a this, live concert. This is amazing. <laughs> Man, you know, I thought I was good with my fucking parody songs. The bar has been raised. Holy like, shit. The only Ric Flair, like, cliche line that he didn't squeeze into that was Space Mountain. That was the only one that I Yeah, did. yeah. That was the only, like, like, it's the oldest ride with the longest line. <laughs> like, that's all he needed. Just that, and it would have every single Ric Flair cliche in the world. Oh, my that's God. That's amazing. Go check that out. That is on, uh, that's on YouTube. Uh, the, uh... Parnell Rigsby, P A R N E L L R I G S B Y, uh, if you want to look that up. And it's uh, called do, 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 do. Ric Flair Parody of Rockstar, is the title. That was uh, so go check that out. Wow. That was awesome. That was a great video. Um, what else we got? We do got a voicemail, right? Right? Yes. Is it uh, playable? Sure. Kind of. <laughs> of course it's playable. I mean, I mean it's big freaky, so I mean, we're gonna mock him we anyway. Play it. it I plays. mean, oh, sword, sword for old time's sake. Yes, I want to mock freaky during the voicemail. So okay. can you please play it? Okay, sir. <laughs> and then he'll get my view, my voice confused with like Lunchbox. steam machine. <laughs> Is that steam machine guy still around? <laughs> you know, uh, here it's loading. There you go. Oh boy, this is a wonder one. Mayhem Nation. We're here. Oh god. Good old buddy Freaky. Like a here during a little mayhem. I'm immediately <laughs> regretting this. Now, this may sadden the wrestling community. Good. 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 It may make you happy because it means I'm not spending so much time what? on it. But okay. Oh, god. My fiance gave me the option. She would either order me Dragon Gate's upcoming internet pay per view from Chicago. Cool. Or I could keep her Xbox in Skyrim video game for the rest of the summer. And I chose Skyrim. Dum, 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 dum. I'll get that. It, yeah. Isn't the Dragon Gate no thing only 10 bucks? Skyrim over Prime I'm pretty sure he's going to buy that. It's like 15 And amazingly enough, I, I spent a good hour playing Skyrim during all last night. <laughs> So, uh, um, I don't know what that says. That says that you but, like playing uh, with dragons. I did enjoy the hour of Raw that I watched, so much so that it made me wonder how I'm going to enjoy three hours of Raw. Oh, you moved. Oh, no. But I think the interesting thing is Daniel Bryan's 
really getting over. Like, it's not internet hype. Okay. Like, he's getting loud, 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 I jizzled all over the place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and reaction to the Air jism. It's my jizz in the box. And, you know, I'm sure somebody will say, good to see you finally noticed. Good to see you but finally noticed. But to me, this is important <laughs> because, you know, they got the Triple H is, in, is barely around anymore. Brock Lesnar is designed to barely be around anymore. Hager does as well. All right, so he's saying, hey, right, Daniel Bryan's doing yeah. stuff uh, and uh, and everything. Mad Mike, your rebuttal. Fuck Wait, you, freaky! <laughs> No, you okay. My God. Well, no, dude. It. All right. First of all, if you're entertained by the first fucking hour of Raw, why the fuck would you turn Raw off? I went to sleep. You fell asleep. There's a difference. I had to get to work this morning. Yeah, exactly. You went to work. But you do catch up on Raw. Yeah, I did. The second hour. Yeah. yeah. If you're entertained by something, why turn it off? That just means you don't know what the fuck you want in your life, Freaky. Listen, oh, listen, snap. listen, listen. Big Freaky can't take an hour of this show. He can't take more than an hour of Raw. We're starting to see a pattern here. I can't take That's more than two minutes it. of him. Uh, oh, uh, he's so calm. I bet his fiance right. can't either. Uh, hi -oh! Hi -oh! <laughs> He's going to uh, confuse wow. me with someone else, so I'm not and worried about that. And on that note, let's go to Amateur Falling Down. The Wrestle Fan is here, not at SmackDown! Well, not that's not Smackdown. Amateur Hour. There's nothing to no. do with Amateur no. Falling Down. That's not Amateur. Uh, so, this week in Amateur Falling Down, I have a couple interesting stories I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, the first was uh, alerted to me, actually, by Sorg. Uh, big Ring of Honor news. Uh, apparently, at their past TV tapings, uh, Sarah Del Rey finally made her return to Ring of Honor. She hasn't been in the company for a while since um, the exiting <laughs> of Chris Hero and Claudio Castagnoli of the Kings of Wrestling. Um, Sarah Del Rey, for most of, for most of her time, uh, her latest time in Ring of Honor. She was used as a valet more than an actual wrestler. She wrestled occasionally, um, but she apparently returned um, and interfered in a match, I believe, uh, against uh, Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis, who is now in Ring of Honor. Um, and apparently they may start something with that. Uh, it could be interesting to see. Uh, we mentioned before, uh, I think it was back in the interview with Rachel Summerlin when we talked about women's wrestling, uh, how, may how it would be nice to see some more women's wrestling in Ring of Honor. Um, so I'm hoping that Sarah Del Rey could be maybe one of those people that could be, hey, you know, we can get some more women's wrestling in here. We can do something interesting with that. Um, so I hope they definitely, uh, excuse me, use Sarah Del Rey to their fullest um, in her upcoming uh, time in Ring of Honor. It's going to, I think that she can add a lot to the company um, as a whole, not just as a valet, but also as a wrestler. Um and the uh, so if you want more information on Ring of Honor and the next shows coming up, uh, go to ROHWrestling.com and go check them out. I know they were in uh, Pittsburgh this past weekend. Uh, I don't believe anyone from the Mayhem show had attended, um, but I hear it was a very good show. Um, and hopefully they will return to Pittsburgh soon. And uh, if they're they're going to a lot of different places now, so if they're in your area, I would definitely. Uh, encourage you to check them out and also watch them on TV uh, whenever they're uh, on in your area. And the next thing I want to note here in the Indie Minute is from down here in Texas at Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Uh, there are uh, more matches for their big uh, 100th event have been announced. Um, uh, it's going to be a really amazing card. Uh, that is uh, July 22nd at Mohawks in Austin, Texas. Uh, there's going to be a lot of really great action um, from a, a, a series of characters. Uh, ACH uh, will be defending the ACW heavyweight title against Jacus Pliskin. Um, Rachel Summerlin from the show will uh, meet uh, her uh, arch nemesis, Lady Poison, for the first time in ACW. Uh, there's going to be a lot of grudge matches, a lot of first-time stuff. Uh, a couple big names. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs will be uh, making his return to ACW uh, in, a, in a very uh, good match, hopefully, against uh, friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Gary J., uh, so that's going to be really interesting stuff. And all, I'm looking through the car. All these matches are going to you know, be really great stuff. So if you're in the Austin, Texas area or in the Texas area, I would really encourage you to stop by there um, on uh, July 22nd at Mohawks in Austin, Texas for their 100th event. It's going to be a big celebration for ACW. So uh, it's going to be really well, awesome stuff. If you want more information and tickets, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. Uh, and the final note that I want to make here on the Indie Minute is a story that I found kind of interesting, and I would also like to know 
you know, the uh, thoughts from the panel here tonight on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, but also you fans at home. Uh, if you have thoughts on this next uh, story, you, I would encourage you to send them to good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, and uh, we'll talk about them uh, coming next week on the show, hopefully. Um, so, uh, AIW, our friends over at AIW, they recently had their Absolution event. Uh, I heard it was a really great event in Ohio. Um, they they've been doing some interesting stuff as of late, but they've done they one of the things they've done has gotten a very mixed reaction by fans and by uh, you know various different people. Um, they hold an event uh, uh, every once in a while called Girls Night Out, which is their big uh, female wrestling event uh, where they have a bunch of different names compete. It's, uh, I always hear it's a great event uh, for women's wrestling. Um, Athena, who is the uh, ACW Queen of Queens this year uh, and resident of Texas, uh, is looking to make her debut in AIW. However, the problem was uh, they couldn't really get the finances together to get her to fly down from Texas to Ohio. Um, and also, it was just a very, you know, complicated thing. AIW started a, a kickstarter S campaign um, on Indiegogo.com uh, in order to raise funds to get Athena to AIW to compete on Girls' Night Out. Uh, right now, they've raised $450 of their $1,000 goal, um, which is it's very interesting. But it's gained a lot of mixed reviews by people because... Uh, some people think this is a good method to use to, you know, get talent out there. And some are saying, no, they shouldn't be doing this. Fans shouldn't be paying for a wrestler to fly down to somewhere. You know, they're, them spending money uh, on tickets and merchandise, that should be enough. They shouldn't have to go that extra mile. Um, the question, uh, I, and, they, and I, as a uh, story showing, they also have one for a, a, some sort of TV project that they I are doing. I looking for yours. Um, but. I'd like to open it up to the panel because I kind of feel both ways. I'm not sure. I would love to know you guys' thoughts. What do you think? Should uh, a Kickstarter campaign like this be something that a company should do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first off, for those, I, I think more people have heard of Kickstarter than Indiegogo. Indiegogo is pretty much like uh, Kickstarter, but for stuff like uh, film specifically. Uh, it it's kind of has a different criteria, I think, for projects that can be featured on it. Like, obviously, something interesting like this, let's fund this lady to get here. Thing for this show um, I, I, I don't know I was looking for it and I found the absolute intense wrestling TV project which is, which is another one uh, they apparently I guess it looks like they tried and uh, it looks like it was from the beginning of the year and they didn't get it they got $430 out of the $6,000 goal um, it's an interesting concept Do, I, I'm trying to find uh, the uh, the actual one because I what what's I, I think it's how they execute it I say Bruh. that uh, what, what, what's up, Chach? I still say no. Why? I don't think it's... It, no, it's not meant to be used for something like this. Well, what, It's supposed what's... to be used for something that can be enjoyed by everyone. Well, this is something that can be enjoyed uh. by people. Well, I, I think the problem is getting this person to a show, getting a star to a show, is something that's supposed to promote the show and get more butts and seats, Right. Like that's basically the yes, concept. Yes, but right? if I'm but, over but if you here, have to pay there, you have yeah, to what? pay in advance to get that person there, so you can go buy a ticket in advance. That that's where it, that's where it's a little weird. Yeah, if you contribute to the to the if you contribute to the fund to get that star there, you should get free admission to the show. Yes, and, and I don't know. Again, I, I think I, I believe that a ticket to the show was one of the incentives for donating a certain amount of money. Uh, I'm not positive on that, though. Well, I mean, isn't that how they pay the talent in the first place, just by proceeds to the show? Yeah, like, yeah. And I, yeah. I think, I think, and I think it's one of those, if we do this, it's kind of like a pre-sale system that we know we'll be able to afford to get her, because any wrestling is a weird thing where, you know, if you don't get enough guys in your seats, then then maybe you can't pay the talent, but that's a, kind of a economic right. thing and also and at. also to note on the whole thing uh, AIW has sort of been uh, in a way very vocal about the fact that they aren't as financially sound as they used to be they ran the whole hashtag save AIW sort of campaign yeah, yeah. Uh, because they are very low on funds um, so that kind of lends to what they're doing here uh, which having is, to do which this, is really uh, campaign to raise the money for uh, something like this which is really interesting because you look at like just for like this absolution they had the Briscoe brothers from Ring of Honor they had you know a bunch of different higher names again a lot of them as we discussed we think a lot of them are probably from the Midwest area so that probably helps rather than Athena is actually from the Texas area of Russell fan 
Yeah, she she, so, she does live in the Texas area, so that's the thing. Exactly. So so that's a little bit little bit different. I, I imagine what is ACH probably local to the Midwest. In, uh, in he he was he was uh, st- in Texas. Now he's in St. Louis. So okay. now he gets uh, more opportunity to go to a lot of different stuff in that so, area. So I mean a. I mean, they're getting a lot of names for being, you know, supposedly not so financially stable. I, you know, but Cindy Wrestling, what company really is in the long run? Uh, but still, if you really like someone like Athena, mm-hmm. or if she's really that good, why why have a fund when you can just pay for that? When you can just pay for her trip to come up themselves? Mm-hmm. Why just do yeah. that? Why not just give her a ticket? Say here you go. Because I, I remember when. Uh, who was it? When Cole Cabana was talking about how Norm Connors gave CM Punk and and himself the, their first ticket. Yeah, they, that was CM Punk and Cole Cabana before they were popular, and he and they gave him that ticket because who knows what would happen with the Cole Cabana or CM Punk. Yeah, but with that, yeah. with, they they didn't have the money. Well, I, I don't think Norm had much money to be get, uh, for that to happen. Mm-hmm. But he did it anyways, because he liked where those two were going, and he wanted to see where they were. It just seems weird that AIW is doing this. Mm-hmm. And, and, and again, you kind of kind of think about it. This is maybe them just trying to <coughs> trying to think outside the box as an indie group to try different things to get you know people like you know Athena that that's making waves down in Texas and. And I, I, I want to say, you know, AIW is definitely kind of more of the smart crowd, you know, guys, kind of like with right. IBC, you know, I, I don't think, you know, a lot of people still appreciate there being Chuck Taylor and Sammy Callahan there, uh, even though the ROH guys on TV didn't show up. This is a group where it's, you know, we want to see the guys that are popping up in Chikara, Ring of Honor, Dragon Gate. And that's a lot of what their card is, is a mix of those kinds of guys, you know, and guys from Anarchy uh, Championship Wrestling that you're enjoying in Texas. Uh, so... And so that's the right audience, I think, to try something of this with. But maybe they're offended because it is something new. It, it, but, you know, I, I give them a lot of credit for thinking outside the box of ways to accomplish what they want to with their company. Right. Um, whether it's right or wrong, I really don't know. Again, I got to look at the campaign. I hope I, I find it here in a minute. I don't agree with Kickstarters of this type. Okay. Um, it's not, and it has nothing to do with AIW or any of these these companies. Because that sort it, of goal. Yes, I, I I don't I don't mean them any ill will. It, it's just this isn't what Kickstarter is for. Hmm. And again, I, I want to say it's for Indiegogo. It's not a Kickstarter per se. Oh, there's different criteria there. Well, I mean, it, and I feel the same way. Uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with wrestling. Hmm. But I saw one for uh, this uh, place in in England wanted wants to bring. Uh, nerd rapper Mad Hatter over. Yeah. And he flat out told them no unless they can pay for his passport. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. If you want to be taken serious as a rap artist and someplace in England is booking you, mm-hmm. you don't make them pay for your goddamn passport. Um, no, absolutely not. You cannot argue this. I can't I argue this because there's a, there's a lot of spe- I think there's a lot mm-hmm. of there's a lot of people like speakers and everything and it's say you know I will go speak for you if you meet those criteria. Of if they, me. I, I can yeah, understand pay paying. I can understand paying for the the flight. Yeah, the accommodations. I can understand that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, to pay for your passport. Yeah, because that's not that's not something you're using like as a one time thing. Yeah, that's, that's just a... something you're too cheap to go out and do yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you're yeah. an actual like artist and you sell your wares worldwide, you need to have your passport. Like that's just that's just trying. That's like um, trying to get you know. It, it's like Ric Flair saying, "Hey, I need new trunks. Pay well, for my tights, and I'll wrestle a match." Well, then, well, I, I think you go back to. Uh, Indie wrestlers don't have that much money. Exactly, that's to the do thing. something like that. So it's something like being handed a ticket or something of that port. Like, uh, you know, what if it, somebody was, uh, you know, uh, get, was trying to give a poor wrestler a help getting a passport so they can start going to Canada or come from Canada for that matter or or, or whatever. Um, yeah, and but and passports I, I, aren't that much. Like, they're they're really not. I mean, most passports. Just asking someone to pay for a passport—that's really kind of—it's kind of bush league. 
I don't know. It just, it just seems like Especially that. versus the, the flight and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, if he said, I'll come out, but you guys better pay for my flight. Exactly. Like, Josh, you said, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. Like, that's means to get out there. That's coming out for a specific thing. It's coming out for a specific show. It's coming out to entertain. Okay, I did find the Indiegogo project here. Uh, they're at 450. Uh, I think Russell Fan said this of their thousand dollar yeah. goal to get this done. Uh, yeah, and it starts at twenty dollars <laughs> for an autograph. I mean, thirty dollars for Girls Night Out Seven pre order. Uh, Seventy dollars you get. All six of them. <laughs> uh, in the chat room. Uh, oh my god. Mando Zitro. Mando Zitro. I uh, said, that's like Russell Fan asking you guys to pay for his green card. Aww. And that is the most apt analogy. Fan in the of the world. week. Fan of the week. <laughs> Fan of the week. Well, there you go. There you go. So we're pretty split on this. So, well, we're split and questionable, I think, on this one. Uh, let me know what you think. It, 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 and like I said, it, it, they, they got some pretty interesting things. Like, you, you get Girls Night Out. DVD box set for seventy dollars. You get a piece of her ring gear for two hundred and fifty dollars. So there that's is just creepy. That's, that's yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what creepy. they do. They sell like that old. Creepy. Have you ever seen like the divas and knockouts like auction their ring gear? Yeah, I know, uh, but that's uh, because TNA yeah. TNA can't pay them enough where they still have to work at Sunglass <laughs> exactly, Hut. Exactly, exactly. They have to work that's at Sunglass Hut. Indie wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and indie wrestling's worse. You know, yeah. I, they don't even have that regular of an income yeah. to be on TV, you know? So, uh, so TNA pays so little, Angelina Love can't eat. Is actually, exactly. Look at her, right? <laughs> uh, at Indiegogo.com slash Athena GNO uh, for Girls Night Out, of course. Uh, there's yeah. a video there for her. It's sort, of sort of an update. I believe that they have. But, but I don't know if it's based off of also what they're doing with Indiegogo, but uh, Athena will be flying up. They have arranged everything. Um, okay. So whether they have the money, I mean, whether it's from that money or they just they've gotten the money for it or not, okay. she will. She apparently will be up there for Girls Night Out. Then what's the Kickstarter for? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, now I, I think it was updated today that they found out that uh, she was going to uh, she the money was raised. Uh, yeah, for her yeah. To, to get and, the and, and usually we get something like that. Like Ray, like Ray Rowe doesn't come up simply for IWC. Right. He gets another booking or two for the weekend. Yeah. He was in, I think, Beyond Wrestling. He was in something else over in Ohio, maybe. Uh, so I mean that that's how that goes, and that's how I mean there's there's deals that are made yeah. to make these things happen in indie wrestling. Or if somebody comes in, well, who else can ride out with you? That structures who's on the card more than getting that person. You know, um, is if you can get four people to ride out, then that helps the travel costs, and that works out. You know, I am not <laughs> in the economics of indie wrestling. This is from what I understand from discussion. I, I just want to disclose that now. I'm not a booker. I don't deal with that stuff. Uh, yeah. but, but that's, that's kind of where this is coming from. And it's, and I said, it's an outside of the box way to think about this, but I don't know. And I don't know about, I give them credit for doing something different, but I don't know. I, I really don't know if it's the right thing. Um, Hey, I, I want to make sure, and like I said, please tweet us, put it into Facebook, what you think of this. We're going to tweet this out as well. This link, if you want to support them or let us know why you oppose it. Um, hey, let's throw out, uh, Bobby put it in the document. AON wrestling is returning. It's not dead yet. Over there not in Johnstown, yet. PA. Go check that out. Uh, if you're in the Johnstown area, over at AONWrestling.com. They're having their show July 22nd. <laughs> uh, so if you're in the Johnstown area, uh, they got that going I on. I can't believe I drove through Johnstown on my way here and it wasn't flooded. <laughs> I, I was going to bring that up. That is exactly why I started <laughs> laughing. Um, I literally saw a, a sign for Johnstown and I'm like, it's oddly dry here. I expected to have my car turn into a submarine like Mario Kart 3DS. <laughs> and he said that it must have been the heat. Yes, it was that hot out. <laughs> that the yeah. entire flood of Johnstown Soaked dried up, up the flood. Yes. Uh, See? Right. Bobby just said it almost flooded here today. <laughs> Jeez. It, it really always floods in Johnstown. If there's no other indie news to be had, guys... That um, is all. The all Coke and Charge is way really. too much for shows. And there's, do you want to talk about that's an indie show, indie news thing? Okay. Do you want to yeah, that? sure. Um, Go for it. Okay. What's the site again so I can bring it up? Uh, NortheastWrestling.com, I think. Okay. I think it's NortheastWrestling.com. Um, well, they have a show that I, I believe you tweeted a couple maybe even a month or so ago about Hulk Hogan coming to my neck of the woods up around Fishkill, New York. And. Oh, yeah, brother. Yeah, I mean, uh, granted, I would love to meet Hulk Hogan. He's one of the guys I've never met before. But, um, 
Oh, they have man, gold dust is yeah, coming. Yeah, gold dust is gonna be there. Vader's gonna be there. Matt Hardy and Lita are gonna be there. And yet, I am still probably not going to go with this because <laughs> <laughs> Northeast Wrestling. Um, I go to a lot of their shows when they're around my area. I try and get to as many of them as I can. They're a really great promotion. However, uh, this this event is being held at an outdoor arena, mm-hmm. and. The way Northeast Wrestling usually runs their shows is they have a huge meet and greet because they get a lot of big name stars. They've had Finley, John Morrison, Kevin Nash, Sonny, Mickey James, Velvet Sky, a lot of guys from TNA and WWE regularly. But this time it's a little different, at least to my understanding. The meet and greet, which is one of the main reasons to go to NEW shows. Not that the wrestling isn't great, but you get to meet a lot of these guys and have some pretty cool conversations with them. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently the meet and greet is only going to be available to people who have purchased tickets to see Hulk Hogan. Now, ordinarily I wouldn't have a problem with this, but the tickets to see Hulk Hogan are, I believe, at last time I looked... $125! A hundred and twenty-five dollars. Wrong. Hey, hold on, I have it. It's uh, it? the first hundred combos are on sale for a hundred and fifty. Okay. After that price increases to one seventy-five for numbers one hundred one to two hundred, and two hundred dollars for numbers two hundred one to three hundred. I sit wow. corrected. I, but I didn't mean that. Oh no, no, I that's just, fine. That's, I had just read that. I, I was giving them more credit than they deserved. <laughs> And I believe uh, that doesn't include admission to the show, correct? Uh, it doesn't say. I, I don't believe that includes admission to the show. That means you you shell out up upwards of one fifty, and still don't get a goddamn ticket to the show. Not to mention the fact if you want to meet any of the other stars, they individually charge for inter- inter- autographs and photos and all that stuff too. So um. NEW, I love you. I, I do. I I go to a lot of your shows. I've 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 chanted you love Somas at my hearty there. But I don't think I can support you on this one. I, I really don't think I can do that. Unless they've changed their policy since the last time I heard that that you need the the Hogan package to do the meet and greet. I I can't support that indie show. Like that that to me is just even grabbing one of the, uh, the, ah, the fifteen dollars ah, tickets, ah, it costs more to see Hogan than to see his little python. <laughs> yes. Aww. Wow, fan of, fan of the show, really. Fan, really. fan of the week is coming through. He is bringing the thunder on fire. <laughs> Matt, Vader and Matt Hardy are making the same face I did when I found out about Hogan's porn. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, here's he, they, there's a uh, king is going to be there. Uh, Matt Hardy. Oh yeah, King, with, King. Oh, we have to mess with King is wrestling. Yeah, he's teaming with a former Yankee who I'm not quite sure who that is. But um, yeah, he only played like one game. Yeah, probably. They're going against former heartthrob Romeo Roselli, someone alert mayhem Missy, and <laughs> and Luke Robinson of Tough Enough non fame. Oh really? Yes. Oh, God, really? Yeah, Matt Hardy's uh, gonna be there. Uh, Lita's gonna be there. Mickey James is gonna is be there. Is it wrong? I want to see Rebby Sky versus Lita. No. Is it wrong? I it's want. Very, I want very wrong. A, a Matt Hardy on a pole match. <laughs> Can we? Someone put a turkey on a pole. Matt Hardy will <laughs> run up and chase it. Only if that happens, I will shell out the three grand it takes to go see this fucking you know, show. Doesn't this go right along with what I was just talking about? That people rode up together, so therefore they got a package deal. <laughs> I mean, yes. really. Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, package deal. <laughs> oh, it's but a no, small I mean, package, folks. Y- you pay, <laughs> you you pay one fifty to two hundred, depending on when you get your tickets. Which oh they've God. had they've had this available for a while, so I'm guessing they're not selling. For, the, for those why, that don't know, on why the video. Like Remy Sky's pay? And, and then I didn't know what Remy Sky was. And, and then for others that may have, no one does. It cost uh, no one. It cost I know <laughs> anywhere from fifteen dollars to seventy five dollars to watch the show. Well, the, se- the seventy five dollars they have like the golden ringside thing and all that. But shit. you can buy their wrestling bus trip package. I'm not going to bus it to a place that's ten minutes from my work. <laughs> but it picks up at White Castle. 
<laughs> when, <laughs> when, shit, I'll mega bust that shit to the White Castle just so I can go. <laughs> you had me at White Castle. Yeah, at that point. The, the buddy. The Do you remember state? when we went to White Castle? Yeah, hold on, yeah. hold on. Wait, 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 idea. wait. <laughs> the new Express will cost one thirty-five, which will include your thirty-five dollar reserve seat to the event in the lev- one hundred level of the section of the stadium on the baseline. Your entrance into the pre-show meet and greet, audio- autographs and photos with the stars will cost extra and can be yeah. pre-ordered here. Yeah. As wrestling bus trips will not be handling meet and, and greet see, tickets at all. All right, but see, the awesome part about this is um. The There's two pick- fireworks. No, the two pickups are in Queens and Manhattan. For those of you who do not know the geography of New York, um, they're charging a hundred dollars for a bus ride. The round trip train to get from New York City to New Hamburg, which is basically where the stadium is, would cost about thirty bucks. <laughs> And you'd have to take a cab to the stadium. The cab would cost roughly ten dollars. That is the biggest. Like they oh, must. Man. Hulk Hogan. Like all right, this go. This goes into no holds barred. I saw the commercial <laughs> for it last night. I saw the commercial <laughs> for it last we'll, night. We'll and get um, more into it later. But no, yeah. I know. But I've never seen no holds barred. Yeah, I've never seen it. I know. I know. I've never seen. It. Don't give me and that. I look. have a VHS for you, sir. Okay. I don't have a VCR <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but um, I saw the commercial last night, and I saw Hulk Hogan reject money. That is the thing that has changed <laughs> since No Holds Barred. He must be charging NEW out the ass if they are charging a hundred thirty-five dollar bus tickets. For a train ticket that costs forty bucks. And in other news, uh, Manzito, Mandazito said he'd pay a hundred dollars just to see Mad Hardy at White Sor- Castle. Sorgen. So that's the after party. <laughs> Sorgan Chachi Mega Bust to White Castle in three D. <laughs> All right, guys, that's your Andy Man. Neil or Patrick so, Harris is there. Or so, guys. Before we get to our break here, I just want to mention a couple things going on. SorgatronMedia.com. Very busy week uh, that we I didn't have time to make commercials for. Um, Super Indies available. There's Super Indie is available, and if you haven't bought it yet, now is the time to do that. Because if you uh, purchase it now at sorgatronmedia.com slash store or at iwcwrestling.com for this week only, only until July 7th, 2012, you will receive a free DVD of Summer Sizzler 4, which includes Ray Rowe versus Samoa Joe uh, for the same price. We're packing that in with everything that we're shipping this week. So uh, go ahead and get your Super Indie or anything else you do it. On. If you want RWA DVDs, uh, of course, the their second ever cage match was just released with RWA Unleashed. You saw the preview last week here on the show if you're on video. Uh, but we're packing in Aggression 2 from 2010, which was their very first uh, cage match that they had down in, uh, I think it's Mount Pleasant, Pleasant Hills. Mount Pleasant, it says on the DVD there. Uh, so go check that out as well. Uh, that's again, SorgatronMedia.com slash store for all of those dvds if you'd like to check out what we got and also uh steel city startups is a kickstarter we're doing here uh you can go to steelcitystartups.com to check out more information we just started this this morning we already have five backers and 162 dollars of our three thousand dollar goal what we're trying to do is uh do a startup uh new video show kind of like what we're doing with unsung uh kind of more of a magazine style uh you know kind of thing um to talk about startups here in Pittsburgh because I, I think that they need to get, you know, more exposure. Uh, so go check that out and me just hanging out above the city. I did the video for Reminisce that. on my flowing hair. I was going to say used, back when you had the flowing sword box. And check out what else is going on and, and uh, over at It was city seriously startups. a few days before you shaved your head. It was. It was literally like yeah. probably like three days before I shaved my head. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then and now. Then and now. Then and now, <laughs> there you go. If you're not on video, I don't see I'm a so difference. sorry for that. Uh, no difference, Mad Mike. Blind as a bat in Bronx. Um, and with that, let's go see what's going on on Wrestling Man Show. Go a short. look at I don't Super Indy 11, and we'll be right back. Yeah, no, we do I need to record some stroke. gold. Yeah, it's, you're gonna you're gonna high, die of heat stroke, and then you'll be a heat stoke monkey. Gauntlet ah! 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 match. On the thousandth raw, and it ends with Gilbert. Mm. He should have Lombardi, Horowitz, Iron Mike Sharp, 
Freddy Joe Floyd. <laughs> if you're wow, Nidia wow, Nitty is stripped in my show? Really? Nidia! I was like six. And so... I was with my mother. Why did she take me to this? Hey guys, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and we would like to take it into a little segment we like to call, Remember When? In this week's Remember When, uh, using our brand new favorite site ever invented on the interwebs, uh, wrestling, WrestlingData.com, we are going to revisit the first wrestling show we ever went to. It's the Memory Helper. It is the... <laughs> it's it, our Remember Box. It's our own Remember Box <laughs> for stuff that we can't find on YouTube. Uh, I'll kick it off. Uh, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to go to many wrestling shows uh, growing up because I didn't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Same here. But when, once I moved to Pittsburgh, that, that started to change after a while. I mean, for a while in Pittsburgh, I didn't really watch wrestling. And then I got back into it. And, and one day, Sword was like, hey, you want to go to the wrestling show tonight? It's a pay-per-view. I have tickets. I have one tickets. So, yeah, I have these tickets. And so I said, all right. We went to the wrestling show. Um, it was Unforgiven 2007. Wrong. What do you mean wrong? It was Armageddon. <laughs> No, was it wasn't. Armageddon. Oh, Armageddon, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I was looking at a different show. <laughs> I, I, have, I have the correct show up on he my ha, screen. He has it up. He just I, read the wrong show. Yeah, thing. I just called the wrong <laughs> show. Um, but uh, It was this one! Yes. <laughs> it, it was that one! It was this one! It was that one! Holy shit, how'd you get one of the chairs? Because I knew... Somebody? Yep. <laughs> somebody? <laughs> shit. Oh. We'll, we'll tell you after the show. I, I okay. did so funny. I, I, I so, so we're getting the kill let, let me just say, somebody, I, somebody, I haven't somebody, had this somebody. chair that long, okay? Yeah. Ooh, so, um, but, uh, alert. somebody. So, Sunday, somebody. December 16th, 2007. And this is a, a, a memorable time because the very next month, uh, we went to New York for the first time <laughs> and stayed with this guy. For the first time, and went to Royal Rumble at Madison Square Garden. Last row in the garden. Yes, the very <laughs> last row in the garden, and it was still uh, there were still amazing seats. But anyhow, um, Armageddon two thousand seven. This was the card. Uh, it opened with a United States match: uh, Mysterio versus MVP. Mysterio won by countout. It was uh, a tag match next. Uh, it was uh, Big Daddy V and Mark Henry defeating <laughs> CM Punk and Kane. That, that is a mass of humanity. In yes. That way. <laughs> and um, CM Punk. Shawn Michaels <laughs> defeated Mr. Kennedy. The number one contenders match for the WWE title was Jeff Hardy defeating Triple H. Uh, remember when we all thought Jeff Hardy was going to win the belt then? Yeah. <laughs> and he got busted. And then, uh, cool. Finley defeated the Great Khali. The WWE title match, Chris Jericho defeated Randy Orton by disqualification. <laughs> uh, the women's title match was Beth Phoenix defeating Mickey James. And the main event was a triple threat match. For the WWE World Heavyweight title. And it was Edge defeating Batista and Undertaker. And it was a title change. And who debuted at that one? Who debuted at that, that one? That was the Edgeheads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was, that was, that was uh, Mr. Winner of the Battle Royal, as I called it before the show. Long Island, I see. But, yeah. Um, the attendance that night was 12,500. <laughs> And it says here that there's only a buy rate of uh, 237,000, uh, but I think that's wrong. It's not too bad these days. 
But uh, yeah, and, and then my second, my my first two wrestling shows were pay per views. That's pretty good. Yeah, That's pretty good. And, and that is pretty the good. second one was a Royal Rumble at Madison Square Garden. And the second one, you got to see Jimmy Snuka fight Roddy Piper. Yeah. So that's it was, it was awesome. amazing. And that's that was my first wrestling show. Excellent. Uh, wrestle fan. I have mine up. Uh, so, yes, laugh at me now, but it's going <laughs> to get more funnier when I... Yeah. <laughs> wrestle fan's first show was last week. <laughs> my, first, my first ever uh, wrestling event I ever went to was a SmackDown house show. Uh, in Corpus Christi, at uh, before we had the American Bank Center, which is what SmackDown's being at right now. Ooh, it's coming around. Uh, <laughs> full circle. Um, before we had that, we had the Memorial Coliseum. For those that don't know, the Memorial, the Memorial Coliseum held two things. WWE house shows, rarely, and the Shriner Circus when they came into town. That's the only <laughs> thing they ever held, and like some trade shows here and there. There needs um, to be a joint venture on that. You want to know why? Because the like, if you go to the concession stand, and n- n- nowadays it's torn down and all that, but if you go to like the concession stand or anything like that, it's all circus themed. So that just shows what the arena was for. Um, so here we go. Here's the card for that event. Uh, in the opening match, Rikishi defeated Rico. Oh. Um, <laughs> Billy and Chuck defeated the team of Hardcore Holly and Randy Orton. Oh, man. Devon defeated Batista. Oh, was that Reverend Devon? I'm assuming it's Reverend Devon. Yes! Devon. This was August 2000. Reverend Devon against Deacon Batista. That's fantastic. Which, I don't know how he beat Batista, because that doesn't make sense in my mind for some reason. Well, that's um, because you're looking at them now. Yeah. Uh, Mark Henry defeated Albert. And... <laughs> This was back when Mark Henry was doing his World's Strongest Man gimmick again. Um, so I, I think that I, I, I don't remember yeah. most of these. I remember like the last crap. couple of you. Yeah. Um, Kane defeated Bull Buchanan. Um, Matt Hardy defeated John Cena. And this was young John Cena with, <laughs> you know, the hair and the tights and not, the you know. The first show you were at, John Cena and Batista both lost. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's happened on a house show this one. since. Uh, in a cruiserweight six-man tag match, <laughs> Billy Kidman, The Hurricane, and Shannon Moore defeated <laughs> Jamie Noble, Tajiri, and Chavo Guerrero by disqualification. <laughs> wow. Did Nitty have anything to do with that? I, I have no... Well, because the next thing, in an interview, Funaki interviewed Don Marie and Nidia, and Nidia stripped afterwards, which, by the way, my mother took me to this event. It really <laughs> makes sense as to why she doesn't like me watching wrestling. Hey, WrestleFan? Wrestle I'm sorry? WrestleFan. You said your first wrestling show was in 2002, right? Right. Okay. Last night, you said that you were... Uh, two months away from being born in 1993. Right. <laughs> you were not six. Okay, I was, I I was said eight. eight then, right? Yeah, he said eight Is that how math works? I, 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 I thought you said eight earlier. No, he said six. Okay, whatever. No, because if oh, you're... Four, four, math aside, math aside, close enough. I was like Stop nine. Stop counting yeah, on no, your toes and continue. He was still a fetus. Uh, I was always a fetus. He, he still is um, a fetus. The, yes. uh, the semi-main event... Was Rey Mysterio defeating Eddie Guerrero, which that probably got a big draw from you know the crowd. Um, yes, I made that joke again. They're That's um, racist. And in the you'll love this in the main event. And think about this for a second because no. this was SmackDown in two thousand two. Okay. Uh oh. Is the it is it a match that doesn't exist anymore? <laughs> hold on. The main event: Edge defeated Chris Benoit. That match doesn't exist. That match does not exist. exist. The so main the event was Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero, and Edge was injured. <laughs> yeah, Edge was injured. <laughs> but exactly. in all honesty, to think back to that period of time, and, you know, Edge and the other guy, um, <laughs> the, po- the point they were in their careers in 2002, and they were main eventing the house show. Uh, Matt, Mike. Like, and this oh. was a point also, because, like, I think I mainly watched Raw. Like, when I started watching wrestling, I never watched SmackDown. So you didn't know, know anything. So you had no idea who anyone like, was. Great. Like, there was, like, we didn't have UPN or something. All right. But I never watched SmackDown. So looking at this card, I probably didn't know who the fuck Wrestle any fan. of these people were. Right, WrestleFan. All right, Mad Mike, your first Come show. Come on. Your first show. Okay. Um, unlike 
everyone else here. I used to go to a lot of wrestling shows. You're from New York. Come on. Well, no, it's no, like all around no. You. Uh, the my birthplace, Poughkeepsie, New York. Yeah. They used to film Raw Even like at so. least once every three months. Yeah. Like, and back then they used to have double tapings, so they would tape two Raws at the same time. Um, the first Raw I found I went to was right after my birthday in 1993. On April 12th, okay? Now, this had 11 matches because they taped two Raws. These were some of the gems that I got to see. The Undertaker defeated Giant Gonzalez by disqualification. Bret Hart defeated Razor Ramon. Scott Steiner beat Erwin R. Scheister by disqualification. Tatanka defeated the legendary Skull Von Crush. Uh, Papa Shango defeated a very young Scott Taylor. Friar Ferguson. Who? The future Bastion Booger. No. Yes. Friar Ferguson was Bastion Booger's gimmick before he was Bastion Booger. And he defeated Chris Duffy. Now, uh, Razor Ramon defeated everyone's favorite non-entity at shows, Virgil. Uh, (laughs) Giant Gonzalez... Defeated L.A. Gore. Yes, Giant Gonzalez worked twice in one show. <laughs> Double time. Okay. Double that, time. That, that's, that's a winner right there. Uh, Tatanka, again, with his undefeated streak, defeated Art Thomas. And in a WWE Tag Team title match, Money Incorporated defeated Bo and Blake, the Beverly Brothers. And the last match listed here, Bam Bam Bigelow defeated Phil Apollo. Wow. Yeah. What? Wow. Uh, Riz, what about you? Real qu- Oh, Riz is gone. Oh, shit. Riz is when gone. Did he, when did he go away? Okay, well, mine real quick. Uh, I, mine was, uh, my first one was Melon Arena. Like, somebody somebody in school was like, was like, hey, we, we want to come along because we talk wrestling a little bit in class. So uh, I got to tag along with his family. And uh, this was in 2000. I always thought it was 1999. Uh, but it's uh, it was a house show at the, well, it's listed here as... Well, I can't find the listing now. The I don't know. First of all, if you're looking for something in Pittsburgh, there are no less than four or five different listings for the Mellon Arena, Civic Arena, or the Igloo, or Pittsburgh Civic Arena. So you're going to have some trouble with that. Uh, well, we had World Light Heavyweight Title Match. Dean Malenko defeated Scotty Too Hotty. European title match, Eddie Guerrero defeated Taz, which I believe is the time. we Actually, we did confirm this. He had the ECW championship, the old ECW yes, championship. Because Mike Awesome left ECW exactly. for WCW. And he's the guy they brought in. And I think after that, he, he came on SmackDown that week afterwards. And, uh, and wrestled Triple with H. With the belt. And, yeah, and wrestled Triple H. Um, Big Boss Man and Bull Buchanan <laughs> defeated the Headbangers. Three-way tag team title match with Edge and Christian, the Dudleys, and the Hardy Boys. They were hot back then, of course. Uh, The hardcore title match where Crash Holly defeated Perry Saturn. TNA defeated Head Cheese. (laughs) Oh, Head Cheese. Was Chester McCheeserton there? I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't think so. What do you mean <laughs> you right don't know? There, he's a show. giant block of cheese. How I'm do you forget sure he was that? Not there. Maybe Smackdown's in, in your town listen, right now. Listen. You listen. cannot talk. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, yes, yes, exactly, Bobby. Head cheese. Um, Kurt Angle, the hometown guy, which I think he was just getting started, defeated Val Venus. Intercontinental title match where Chris Benoit... Who? Nope. Mm-hmm. That match doesn't <laughs> Who? exist. You both looked at me at the same time. That match Who? doesn't exactly. exist. That match uh, does defeated, not exist. Well, then nobody defeated Chris Jericho that night. And a big six-man tag to lead off the night, or land off the night with The Rock, Farouk, and Bradshaw against DJX of Road Dog, X-Pac, and Triple H. So there you go. Um, <coughs> chat room. Who's left? Uh, who's left? Chat room. Uh, Bobby put his up. Uh, in Did you see uh, Riz's tweet to yeah, the show? Yeah, Riz is there and it dropped out. Okay, okay. So I blame we'll, we'll Instagram. Him, we'll get him back in. Okay, in the chat room, uh, we have... Bobby do, put do, the do. link to his. Bobby put the link to his and somebody else had one listed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mandozito. Yeah, says, fan, fan, fan of the, of the week. week. Sorry. Uh, says his the the first was a TV taping. It was John Cena FU'd Eddie Guerrero on a tire in El Paso. That was their... Um, Classic parking lot brawl was match. It? Nice. Yes, and I believe Eddie in that match did a frog splash from the top of one car to the top of another car. Yep. If I remember that correctly. 
And it looks like Bobby's was also a house show. Holy shit, Bobby's was worse than mine. Johnstown. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Men on a mission defeated the Red Knight and the Black Knight. Yes. What? <laughs> I believe the Red Knight is actually Kane. I'm, that could be. That could I'm be, pretty yeah. sure on that. Click that shit. No, so, okay, no, the so Red Knight and the Black Knight were um. Yeah, the, Marty, Marty Gennetti defeated the Brooklyn Brawler, a ladder match with Razor Ramon and IRS. Over the God. IC belt in Johnstown in oh, a house show? Mike Rotunda in a liar wow. match. Undertaker defeated Ooh. Yokozuna in a title world title match. That's uh that's some heavy stuff. Bob Backlund defeated Mike Sharp. Iron Second Mike match. Sharp. Iron. I don't Mike think Sharp. he was iron by then. He He's iron always the iron. I think Mike he got Sharp. a little softer by the nineties. Okay, then Less he is iron. Ferris so Copper. Co he was Ferris Copper Sulfate Iron Mike Sharp. Exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, no, please. Hey, let us know what was your first show. Wait, e what? Click on the Red Knight. Red Knight. Yes. We want to see that? more about the Red Knight. Match, the Red Match Knight six. and the Black Knight. Let me see what I'm this pretty is. sure the Red Knight is Kane. Nope. No. <laughs> is the oh, Brooklyn it the, Brawler? It was Steve Lombardi. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, the Black Knight then. So he did. No, the Red Knight and the Black Knight and the Blue Knight, I believe, were Shawn Michaels' knights in uh, the Survivor Series match. Yeah, yeah. Match. Um, it was supposed to be Jerry Lawler's knights. And this was this was in December, so it was just after that. Wow. So, so Brooklyn Brawler worked twice. Yeah, yep. as two different people. It was in a tag match, though. Barry Horowitz. Uh, <laughs> Barry Horowitz was the Black Knight. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. On that note, you can say, let us know on Twitter, on Facebook, on the email. Uh, what was your first show? Let us know about it. Uh, so. Uh, Matt, Mike, oddly, we do have a minute of mayhem this week. What? I know. All right. Who the fuck stole my gimmick? All I know is I have a unlabeled YouTube video here that I have not hit play on yet. Sorg, is this GTV? That says... I, <laughs> that's a nice <laughs> 2000 reference right there. I know. So here we <laughs> go with your minute of mayhem. What's up, hot dogs? Mad Mike's in the studio. I'm on the road, so that means it's time for DJ Lunchbox's Minutes of Mayhem. I'm doing this before Raw, so I can edit it during Raw. So if anything happens during Raw, fuck it. This week, WWE released the poster for SummerSlam. Sadly, it looks like this. The reason it's sad is because they did it before Brock actually said he'd be there. There were also reports this week that CM Punk is pushing to wrestle Steve Austin at WrestleMania 29. Austin even said that if he were going to do it, it'd be against Punk. Monkey Rodeo. <laughs> We're quickly approaching Raw 1000. I want to know what you want from the show. Any dream matches, big returns, guests? I covered this last part last week over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Go read! And now, a video of me eating something. Good pork. Bye bye. Bye bye, Iron Man. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, Iron Man. Bye bye. Bye bye, Iron Man. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Or uh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mad Mike, for <laughs> inspiring DJ Lunchbox to create a minute of mayhem. Oh my god. He actually put monkey. I can't compete with Monkey Rodeo, no. fucker! No, you're not. No, no you're one done. can. You're done. You're done. I can't compete with that shit. No That's more. it. I'm going to have to get a hamster and have it ride my puppy the next time I do a uh, minute of mayhem. Oh. That will probably be considered animal abuse. Look, now he's uh, eating not something. really. All right. I don't think I, I can compete with eating something on there, though. I, I, think, I, can, I think I can muster up that. But the... All right. The Brock Lesnar SummerSlam poster, that was what Triple H showed a week ago. Yeah, yeah. So... No, I know. He's saying, unfortunately, I think in general, just because it looks like that. Well, no. Brock Lesnar is Zach Parisi. What? Because Zach Parisi said he was going to have an announcement 
about what he was going to do. Last night, Raw said they were going to have an announcement if Brock Lesnar was going to fight Triple H at SummerSlam. Paul Heyman came out and said, My client will announce if he fights Triple H on the thousandth Raw! So, I'm pretty sure we're going to find out where Zach Parisi signs on the thousandth episode of Raw. Oh, oh. man. I know. Fan of the week! Fan of the week! What? Fan <laughs> of the week! <laughs> Why? Why are you just saying this? Mad Mike on a buffalo! Oh. Uh, oh, my. Mad Mike oh on my. a buffalo! Winner! Get this guy in the hangout! Yes. <laughs> kick out WrestleFan! Or Hot I'm not in the hangout! I don't care! Just kick him out! <laughs> person. I should say person. Get this person in the oh, hangout. speaking of kicking person. out... I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. Speaking of kicking out, did you know that that final promo on the TNA gut check segment is called the kick out? I, I did not hear that. That's the that. stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. What? That's what they called it. Oh I'm not joking. They, call, they called the final promo because apparently every single gut check segment is going to have the first two people disagreeing. Kind of has it's to. It's always going... It kind of has to. It, yeah, but you know what? If they set it up as unanimous, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. No. Uh, no, I'm sorry. But... Why even announce the first two people, then? Why even announce the first two people's decision if it's going to come down to the third person anyway? And they call their final promo the kick-out. Man, Mike, you know what's something that's going to make you feel better? What? Well, actually, not you, because you haven't seen this yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, but they released No Holds Barred today! Yay! Zeus, what yes. do you think about it, man? Yes. Tell Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake the way that it is. Oh, go check out this promo. <laughs> got WWE Presents Noah Barge DVD and digital, of course, over on uh, uh, YouTube.com slash WWE Fan Nation. It's, it's eight minutes of current WWE stars slamming No Holds Barred to make <laughs> you want to buy No Holds Barred, <laughs> and uh -huh. it freaking works. Go check out. It's like Kaylin and The Miz and Matt Brodus Stryker Clatt. and Brodus Clay. It's, it's kind of weird. Even John Cena. It's kind of weird. I haven't seen that movie, considering the first pay per view I watched ever was the one with Zeus on it. I thought that included the movie. No. Oh. We, uh, we're big on fan interaction on this show, right? Yeah. Um, we need to have a vote. Okay. Uh, okay. Is somebody uh, getting voted off the Mayhem show? Uh, according to uh, oh, great. <laughs> according to Fan of the Week, there's only room for one Texan, Texan on this show. Oh, Ooh. fucking god damn it. Um, <laughs> wait, does this have to be unanimous? Or or as WrestleFan says, it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have okay. to be. Well, if it's unanimous, then I have a chance. Um, <laughs> I think Sorg sort of liked me. <laughs> uh, so I, I motion that we uh, replace WrestleFan as the uh, primary Texan on the show. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Wrestle fan, I want to hear your promo. I want to hear your kick out. <laughs> I'm not kicking out. <laughs> Alright, fine. Fuck him then. Thumbs down. Yep. <laughs> Sword? I'm for him. I'm for him. I like his indie stuff. It's going to be a tie. Yeah, but the indie stuff's over. It's going to be a tie. <laughs> because of the because it's it's Sorg WrestleFan you and me. God damn it. Sorg WrestleFan, what's your kick out? He said he wasn't gonna do a kick out. Ah uh, I'm like, dude, impassioned promo. Out? Point point to the ceiling saying you're doing this for your dead father, or say you had cancer, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's or say you're Joey now. Ryan and you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, they'll get me a contract. I don't give me a contract. I could say ninety three percent of people voted for me to stay on the Mayhem show, but you know that shit isn't true. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still watching this uh this no holds barred promo over here. Seriously, it's such a great horrible movie, and they, they just take it apart. I mean they're taking apart the uh the rip'em sign that's going on there. Did you see they added the WWE Studios logo to it? Yeah, yeah. It's what like they almost want us to know that every WWE Studios movie is bad. <laughs> is. Yeah. But technically, it is the first WWE Studios thing. It was a WWF production. It's owned by WWF, I think, wholly. Um, and at the time, I'm sure it was distributed, I think, uh, Columbia House. Not Columbia oh, House. Speaking um, of... Whoever did Ghostbusters. Speaking of WWE produced things that aren't wrestling, did anyone see the promo after Raw? 
Where they're yeah. all in the office? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how amazing that was? I want that to be the first hour of Raw. Just like the WWE office. <laughs> yeah. And you just have CM Punk, like, the every time someone says something stupid, CM Punk's like... <laughs> Just does the not impressed face, or Jericho yeah. rolls his eyes, or something. I think the two big who's, who's putting had stuff in Jello promo. What? Brodus Clay. Brodus Clay covered yeah. all the belts in Jello. Yes. Where are you going? Uh, he walks away. He walks he, he's away. He's just leaving. He just he just had enough. Nicotine of this. fit. All right, I want to touch on some of the other things. Yeah, that was a great promo. Go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Um, and also, I'm sorry, Wrestle Fam. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Maxine is left. Oh. <laughs> he cried all week. Oh my god. Uh, he cried it, it, all it, week. It's depressing. It's just because, you know, honestly, she did have a lot of talent. And yeah. she was probably one of the better divas there, oh, like personality wise and wrestling wise. Um, but apparently, like, the reports are saying that she was basically like, yeah, there's no getting past NXT. Like, I'm not going anywhere. Do you know, do you know how, many, how many fucks I give about Maxine? Negative three. Oh come on! No, I'm sorry. Well, did you, did you? You didn't watch Fuck a lot of NXT, you. and she didn't pop up. Yeah, like, but you know you, what? You can't base that on what was on Raw. Then you try and make yourself noticed. Okay. Look what? at Zack okay. Ryder. No, 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 no. Hold on. Uh, giving them a minute divas match. Uh, divas match. Wrestle fan. Look at no Zack Ryder. Ten, uh, one of ten girls in a bikini thing. Don't tell me she needs to get noticed. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to tell you. Look at Zack Ryder. A year, a year and a half ago, this day, Zack Ryder was on the track to being fired. Not let go, not I'm going to explore other options. Fucking fired. I can give you that. I can give you that. I mean, really, really. Dude, little, it's all it, about it, wanting it. It looks like she's like, meh, that good enough. Hey, you look know. at Tyson Kidd. Hey, no, Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd was I... floundering on superstars mm -hmm. for years, mm -hmm. years, and now he's getting a push. And you know why? Because he had a killer series with McGillicuddy. Yes, of all yeah. people, and McGillicuddy should be getting more shit. Yeah. And McGillicuddy, uh, one thing, one thing I noticed is happening. If you've watched the last few episodes of something like Santino's Foreign Exchange on YouTube, you remember how you all we were always really big on those guys on NXT that were having really cool backstage promos and stuff that were like actually entertaining and different. Uh -huh. Now they're having them over on Santino's thing and incorporating with him and popping up and and I mean yeah. it, it's silly stuff, but it keeps these guys in your head if you're like taking in all, all of this you stuff. Need to do and a lot of people are watching that because WWE Fan Nation is in the top 10 of YouTube channels. Yeah. Uh, it seems week after week from what I've seen so far. Right. Well, I would just love, I would love for them to, you know, give them more of an opportunity. Exactly. I would love for them to see, you know, give Derek <clears throat> Bateman more stuff than putting him in a match yeah. with Ryback. Exactly, exactly. You know? and there's only so, there is, but there's it, only so much time you have for television. Exactly. And some people just need to wait their goddamn turn. And, and I understand there there are some success stories from NXT. AJ now the primetime players are doing great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know there's you know so there's a chance for success. But I do while I get what you guys are saying that she probably should have waited it out a bit longer because maybe they would have given her something. You know at the same time I get what she's saying. It's like when Loki left. Yeah, Loki was like, "You don't have anything for me. Fine." Yeah, but that's different. Loki left because he could make. Better money and get more consistent work on the indies. Now, I, I think guys like Low Key, like Daniel Bryan, uh, I, I think a lot of them go in there like, well, really, I shouldn't have to prove myself. Really? With my history? Yeah, but you know what? And, and, Fuck and that's that. understandable. You have to check. One of the first things every veteran says when you show up to WWE is you have to check your ego at the door. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You have to because you're starting a new job. I don't care what your resume... This works for anything, not just wrestling. I don't care what your resume says. You start a new job. You start at the ground floor. You have to work your way up. Right. Unless you're something huge like a Brock Lesnar. And even he had to work in OVW for a while. Yeah. Like, you have to work your way up. It's just the natural that, order. That's why, that's why Hero is still, you know, in FCW doing stuff. There's, that's why Tyler Black is still down there. And that's Tyler why, Black you know, is going to be on NXT sooner than later. Yeah. 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 And, Tyler, and that's and, why Claudio and guys like, you know, that haven't really... They're there, but they haven't made that big push. 
Well, no, Claudio no. just debuted a month ago. Give yeah. him fucking time. Yeah, I mean, I mean oh yeah. My God. How long? How long did it take for CM Punk? You know, exactly. Like, Man, take these guys. These guys. Why can't you give CM them? Punk, CM, CM Punk left in 05 uh, from the Indies. He. It took him a year for him to get his first match on ECW. I think John Cena exactly. was even in OBW longer. Yeah, probably. John probably. Cena or and Batista. And Batista. I think we're all in OVW longer than a year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, even look at what what happened. You know, the big story with Big Show was he came in as the hot property because yeah. he came from WCW, but even they had to knock him down a peg and send him down to OVW. Yeah, the bottom so, line I mean, is this is if it, you want it really, really bad, and you're willing to wait for your opportunity, especially in the Divas division, it's so fucking easy to wait for it because there's not that many divas yeah it's like the, it's like the diva belt comes around to you uh, eventually anyways yeah or you, know, you at least get an opportunity at it yeah, you know yeah. how many of us were surprised when tamina got a shot at the divas title exactly exactly you know yeah um yeah I, and especially I, if kelly kelly's taking a leave of absence yeah and then yeah. that opens the door a bit. That opens the, the door. The are gone. Huge. Yeah. Because Kelly Kelly was the face. Mm -hmm. They have no face of the Divas Division right now. No, no. Unless they you have make no it, face. Kelly unless Kelly, you make it Beth. Bellas are gone. He isn't even wrestling anymore. No, you can't, you can't say Beth is the face. They're, they're not throwing Beth Phoenix out there. If anything, they're throwing Eve out there because she's going to be on a TV show. Yeah. But she's a heel. Yeah. So she can't be the face. There's a huge window of opportunity in the in the Divas division, and if she's not willing to wait for it, I give negative three fucks that she's leaving. Riz, what do you think of this whole situation? Now that you've come back to us, looks like via your cell phone. I can't hear any of you guys. All right, good oh, thing. Good Moving Lord, on. Riz. All right, some technical <laughs> problems there. Uh, what do you guys? Uh, let's let's toss it up to the hangout uh, who have been hanging out here patiently. What do you guys think of the Divas situation here, and and, and people like Maxine just walking away from it? Uh, honestly, it, I agree with a lot of what you guys said. It's like, there is not a lot of divas in that company. So if somebody's patient, it's going to come around quicker than if you're uh, John's, any of the guys, I have to say. Because yeah. there's a lot more guys in that company that would have more of a bitch problem than the females. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I mean, uh, look what happened to AJ. Caitlyn's slowly getting stuff now. You know, it'll happen. Yeah. Well, not for her, because she fucking left. Well, yeah. But, uh, no, I'm saying in general, if you wait long enough, it'll and happen. And by the way, what's the over-under on her lying and showing up in TNA for gut check? Yeah. What's I'm the over-under on that? Yeah, I agree, Mike. That, that's, that's a possibility. I say that's three gut checks, and we're going to see Maxine on there? Maybe. Yeah. Within maybe three I'll, gut checks? I'll go for that one. Which it's honestly, kind of yes, yes, you should stay there longer. But she really was talented. I mean, it and even she really was, you know, had a great character. She knew a little bit about wrestling to the point where it was like, oh, she can actually do shit. You know, it was it was something something interesting, and it's a shame that she can't, you know, no, show that more. No, I'm now sorry, again. it's not a shame. She's the one who's choosing to leave. It's not a shame. It's kind of like the Gail Kim situation back when she went into business for herself during that role and just jumped out of our Royal and now she and then she went back to TNA and they basically pretty much made her the center of the division right now. And I could see where some divas out there on the indies would love to get to the WWE, but I keep hearing <coughs> from numerous people uh, that are well mainly numerous women uh, that the WWE ideal uh, setting is not for every diva because they want they want the eye candy stuff. Yeah. TNA, if you want to wrestle, that's where divas are wrestling. Yet the knockout division, yet it's still kind of treated like a joke. It's gotten better, and I mean, even with the first Impact Live, didn't even have a, a, uh, a knockouts match because they thought, well, look, it's the knockouts. Uh, they're they're not doing so hot, and they just threw Brooke out there and. Well, Brooks not the best answer to a knockout division, but no. still, we at least have women's wrestling on TV. Exactly. And, and the thing about Maxine is, and to compare it to the Gail Kim thing, Gail Kim kind of went out and sort of like trashed her time in WWE and said they don't treat their diva seriously. I've had so many problems with them. Maxine was very professional in saying I had I had a great time there. I respect everyone in WWE. I just didn't feel I was going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, and that could have been a life change that maybe wrestling wasn't for her. You know, I mean, at at that point. 
Um, because it's like, okay, I, I got to the place where everybody wants to get to. I saw what it's like. The promised land isn't what it's all, all cracked out to be, at least for me. You know, I mean, a lot of these people are like, hey, hey wrestling's so, tough, guys. So she got to America and, the, and discovered that there were, in fact, cats there? <laughs> wow. That, sure, sure. Ameri- I, I guess. American Tail reference? There are no <laughs> cats in America, and the streets I are paved it. with cheese. Come on! Wow! I yes, watched that movie I'm bringing it years. back to Fivel, bitches. Fivel in wow. the house. Yes, Fivel in the house. Wow! <laughs> Russell fan doesn't get this. Russell fan no, has no fucking he idea no what idea. I'm talking. Russell fan, didn't if even you see want Saturday morning cartoon bullshit, Russell fan, <laughs> go go on your remember box and find American Tale. But avoid and, avoid, and you will cry. Avoid you will cry. Fivel goes west. Yes. You will cry during somewhere out there. I guarantee it. Yes, if you don't, you, you have no soul. Uh, no Are, lie, I have. A, it, I'm sure it's still in my dad's. A 45 of somewhere out there. Nice. Yeah. Single <laughs> record final of that shit. What's a record? What's a, what's a record? <laughs> what's a record? What's a record? Oh my god! What's oh. a? Is that like the? Is that like that thing Cindy Lauper smashed onto? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that the thing you hit people with? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. And Chachi is gyrating. And I oh. took a picture of Chachi gyrating. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, he's not wearing pants. Moving on. Hey, big, Batista's doing something no, that's not. not looking silly. And then, hey, where'd I go? Where did I go? Where did you there go? I am. There I am. No, Every, it, that's not Batista looking does is silly. silly. Well, well, it could be. It's Quentin Tarantino produced. It's I think written and directed by the Riz, the Riza, Riza, the Riza, the Riza. Really? And and really, Mr. Big Rapper? You don't know how to pronounce the RZA? No, man. I don't <laughs> fucking know. Um, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Wu-Tang Clan. I'm not down with that. Oh, I enjoyed the video game. Uh, <laughs> written by Eli Roth and, and the RZA. Directed by the RZA. Uh, pre- produced by Quentin Tarantino. So it's going to be fucked up, man. Wait, written by Eli Roth, <laughs> directed by the RZA, and produced by Quentin? Yeah. yeah. Holy fuck. Also, it, that was co-written by Riza and, uh, and Eli Roth as well. Oh my god. So wait, and there's some pictures here. Uh, there's some stuff about uh, the is Thanksgiving. The end, and it looks like they put the F.U. Wait for it in Kung Fu. <laughs> oh shit. And the man with the iron fist is what it's called. It's uh, and there's a uh, Batista. Is Marvel gonna sue? There's some Batista all gold like and shit, uh, fighting shit. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be fun. Some Lucy Liu. I think I may actually have to see that. This, this sounds this good. actually looks good. And Batista kind of looks like a badass in this one. That is all right. Does Nothing he still look that. like cancer patient Batista? No, no, he doesn't. This good. is definitely, he looks like he's right out of the WWE. So there's that trailer over there. Uh, you can see that over at, uh, the, uh, not between the ropes, wrestlingzone.com. Actually, a friend of the show, Justin LeBar. LeBar. So go check that out. Uh, any other news out there we need to talk about? Raw was last night, of course. Uh, Impact got shut. Oh, we'll oh, a oh, bit. oh. Can Impact. I... Yes. Last week, fucking Jigsaw was on it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Motherfucking yeah. Jigsaw. Yes, he was. Jigsaw from Chikara. Uh, Scorpio Sky from PWG. Sabian from CZW. That's who the other two guys were. Okay, I oh, knew yeah, they... I was wondering what those were. I knew I recognized them, but I couldn't place... What they and what of course, they, were they changed the team. fucking name. So oh my god, yeah. they no, called the worst fucking names ever. Yeah, no, no, I like no, I like Rubik's. Rubik's is fine, no, but they no, gave no, Russell fan, and Russell fan, Russell guy just generic names. Russell fan, Rubik's is not fine when you look at fucking Jigsaw's attire, which is nothing but puzzle pieces. That's true. <coughs> yeah, yeah, but still great to see those. Just like we saw with Destination and X apparently, last year. Um, it's great to see those faces pop On up. Impact Live this Thursday, they're going to have more qualifiers with people who are not on the roster currently. Nice. So we could see maybe a friend of the show. I don't know. Who I, honest, I honestly don't know who's going to be on it, but we could see any number of people. Yeah. If they have, yeah. if they have some agreement with Chikara, we could see someone like Chuck Taylor. Like, that would yeah. be awesome. Like yeah. I, I don't I don't fucking know. Like honestly, the Destination X, I wish <laughs> TNA was more like this all year because they're having a it looks like they're gonna have a one night tournament yeah. for the X Division Championship. Yep. Yep. And I thought it, I thought it was an Ultimate X match. No. I don't believe so anyway. They haven't announced that. Yeah, I think it sounded like it was a tournament. Yeah. Like uh Sanjay Dutt was 
Wait, not Sanjay Dutt. Um, yeah, Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt. Oh, it was Sanjay. Sanjay. Okay. He was, was the one Sanjay. that fought Rubik's. Yes. Um, I don't and know. Sabian. Who, and Sabian. Okay. And then um, the other, the three contracted guys are Shima, um, Kid Cash, and uh, um, the the British guy, right? I want to point Williams. out here from the chat room, you're a fan of the league, says that they couldn't afford puzzles in Texas. Uh, we played with <laughs> dirt and copies of No Holds Barred. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That makes absolutely sense. But, um, yeah, TNA, uh, oh, and one last thing about TNA. I, I swear I'll get off the topic, but I watch it every week. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Stuff happens there. The fucking angle with AJ, <laughs> Dixie, oh, uh, fucking CM Punk sister. It's not over. It's never going to be over because this is how TNA books. There's always going to be that thing that, okay, we have to suffer through this in order it's to get worst. to Why? Oh, I've want. seen in a long she time. She's the worst the actress the I've is. ever seen. My left testicle acts better than this woman. Like, it has screen credits. <laughs> Don't give me that look. Don't give oh, me that look, mustache. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, anything else we need to touch on here, guys? Um, anything? Anything at all? Anything? Maybe mm. the Hangout will come back here? We, um, lost, we lost Riz again. Uh, the Rizza. Who's going to be GM of Raw? Like, after all this stuff? No, like, no, like, t- like next week's Raw. Did they announce anything? I thought, that, no, I thought the Zack Ryder thing so. was no. Uh, that's Zach's gonna be Zach's gonna be jam of SmackDown next wow. week, but they haven't announced a jam for Raw. Interesting. I hope, I hope against hope. I wish against wish, the laptop returns. <laughs> nice. And that would and, be nice. And the best way to do the laptop, if they do the laptop coming back, you show like a GTV or a Peekaboo style camera like TNA does, and you show Johnny Ace on the back, sending emails to Michael Cole. I can't. I can't That's believe the they best haven't way done, to do it. it I can't believe they haven't done Heyman yet. No, I think which, which makes me believe that they're going to make him the GM permanently at the Thousand Raw. Like after all this thing settles and there's the lawsuit, and or everything, at least the GM until the SummerSlam. The there you go. At least the GM until SummerSlam. That True. Be, yeah. That could be. Uh, all right. Yeah. On that note, guys, it's time to learn. Oh, what there's a pay per view this weekend. There is. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. It's the weekend week. after. We. I, no. I, I what. No. 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 no, no, there isn't. No, wait, Destination X is this weekend. What? No. What? I think so. No. What? No, no, it can't be. No, what? They're still having qualifying matches. July 8th. It's this weekend. Yeah. Hey, Thank Destination you. X is this weekend. Go Thank check you. it out. Austin Aries versus Bobby Roode. Last man standing with uh, uh, Angle, Christopher uh, Daniels uh, and AJ Styles. Yeah, AJ that's going to be awesome. Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle. That's, uh, that, that, that's what, that, that is the pay-per-view you're going to want to watch. Oh, hey, also this weekend, I almost forgot, uh, Prime Wrestling is having a show uh, with Jimmy Jacobs, as we mentioned, uh, for uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, Also, who else is on this one? Um, Everybody else that's in Prime Wrestling, of course. Uh, That includes Johnny Gargano, Michael Fassade, usually uh, Jason Gorey, Bobby Beverly, Bobby Shields, friends of the show like that so go check that out at primewrestling.com in all the past years as well hey announced for resolution three their big show up in cleveland at the nautica resolution stage five. what five what i say so it doesn't know Roman three rules. it looks like a three when i glance at it rhino versus jason bain has been announced for that so go check that out it will be on i pay-per-view for non cleveland area i'll be up there of course working uh so go check that out uh sorry just just thought of that just thought of that um, all right, what did you learn from wrestling there, Chachi? That jobbing, or that lo- uh, beating Doink the Clown is only one peg above actually jobbing. <laughs> okay. Mad Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I I learned that I missed being on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Aww. Aww. Change your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Get a new job. Fuck IBM. Fuck off and die. No, I also learned that um, DDP uh, looks pretty pretty good. He looks in ring shape. It's that yoga, man. Yep. I'm telling you, I, I think yoga. I may get that DVD. Oh, and also, I want to, um, for for those of you who know, barbershopwindow.com, uh, they do awesome wrestling t-shirts and all things like that. Yeah. They recently had 
an updated version of the shirt that I'm wearing. Okay, pull, hold that up there. Yeah, explain for the audio. Um, it is a shirt that says Indie Wrestling in the fashion of the Indiana Jones font. My buddy uh, Jesse actually works for Barbershop Window and does designs for him. And they bought this design off him, and he did an updated version with Indiana Jones press slamming a wrestler. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Yes. So if you want to support awesome people like that, buy shirts like that. Wrestle fan, what would you learn from wrestling this week? Obviously I nothing learned... from SmackDown, because you're not fucking there! Yes. Fuck SmackDown. I learned someone's probably in the river right now. Um, <laughs> I learned that AJ is the most developed character that WWE has right now. Hmm. The ending to Raw was amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got wood. Mm. Got wood. Excellent. Excellent. Just because I got wood. AJ got wood? What? She's got that euphoric look in her ass. <laughs> <laughs> AJ has turned into Bubba Ray Dudley. Oh, I get a table reference. I thought you were talking about... Uh, uh, Bobby FJ Town learned in the chat room uh, that... <laughs> I was screwed out of seeing a decent show because I saw the Brooklyn Brawler wrestle two times. Also, that Razor Ramon laid in the ring after the ladder match and someone in the crowd yelled, don't just look at him, help him. <laughs> John Fun learned that you have to run in and save your divas in distress. Yes. There you go. There and you also, go. our fan of the week learned that me and WrestleFan are long-lost brothers. And what you're going to do when Hulk Hogan's... Four inch python runs wild <laughs> in you. Runs wild uh, in you. That's good. That's fantastic. I think we have a trailer line for the porno. And uh, Sorg. Oh, Sorg, yes. uh, what did you learn this week? What did I learn this week? I watched a lot of wrestling, of course, yesterday, as I usually do. Um, I learned, well, crap, I didn't think about this. Jesus uh, Christ, didn't you know that? You yeah, haven't I know, been I got, gone I got, that I long. Actually, I got Joey, Joey Ryan. He's the best thing going in TNA. I love what I they're doing with that. I think he's going to win the X Division Championship. I love what they're doing with that. I, lo I love this is the like the CM Punk thing. I mean, oh, I, on top of what you're seeing, of course, on TNA, I don't know if you follow uh, look him up on YouTube, see what's going on with him. He's doing videos on there, uh, addressing all this stuff and saying, you know, screw you, Taz, who the hell are you? Stuff like that. Um, and uh, and also, like, he, there was a video of him in NWA Hollywood. Where he, he did a promo and kind of made fun. Of, like, I think he, he held kind of like his own gut check with the two mm -hmm. jobber looking guys that like popped up. <laughs> yeah. like, they looked like they're about to get squa squashed by Ryback. Uh, so, so, I mean, this is carrying through and hitting this and, and kind of, and, and I love those things like that. Like when CM Punk left and just popped up on indie shows and did the thing with Gregory Iron last week, last year. And did the thing at Comic Con. It, it, exactly. I mean, like, that's the kind of thing it's I think. It's about the same and, time, I, too. And, and obviously, Joey Ryan isn't, isn't like as big as CM Punk or anything like that that I, I think he could be someday um but to see him doing something along those lines i think it's really smart by him tna whoever's the brainchild of this i think this is the best thing to come out of gut check so far um you so, know if they had him show up in one of the qualifiers on thursday in a mask and then he won the whole damn thing and unmasked after he won the belt that'd be great that and then just grab the belt blew a kiss to taz and left through the crowd that's what they should do. There you go. You should come out as like That idea is free. Or... That idea is free of charge. Please feel free to use it. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Hey, guys, it's been the Wrestling Mayhem. Oh, and Mayhem. Hot Wheels learned that he loves me. Aw, and uh, mm -hmm. it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Get us on iTunes, Blip TV, Roku Boxes, and Stitcher, of course. Please review us, rate us, do all that stuff. Drop us an email at GoodTimes. GoodTimes! Good WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. Uh, also, check out the app on your uh, iOS app store and Amazon app store for uh, Android and iOS. Of course, iPhones, iPads. I uh, get you exclusive of content as well as links to all the contact information for the show so you can get involved and enjoy some extra stuff and all the episodes are listed right there as well uh, of course get us on twitter as well i'm at sorgatron at shot who says at mad mike 4883 uh at the wrestle fan at riz iup and everything else at hot wheels rwa uh at john fun i think is his thing uh that was in the hangout not I am this, all week. this is more than just a Tuesday night thing, but we are here live Tuesdays, live.sogatronmedia.com at 8.30 p.m. Eastern or so. Uh, might get a little bit of overlap with Let's Play, the video game show we have with our insert coin to begin.com. And check out everything else at sogatronmedia.com, please. And we'll see you guys wait, next week. Wait, wait, <laughs> Boys okay. and girls, tomorrow is Independence Day. America! So two things. 
Number one, happy birthday, America! America! Number two, don't blow off any of your goddamn limbs with fireworks. Yes, that way safe. you can come back next week and listen to us live as you normally do. To be fair, wouldn't they just need their ears for that? Shut it. Also, if they're um, in the hospital, they can't listen to us. Bullshit. They have no, Wi-Fi. Fuck that. <laughs> um, also, if any of you have the chance tomorrow, please, please, for America, someone, someone for the love of God, body slam Yokozuna on the Intrepid. That's right. Someone, please, for the love of God, if you have a helicopter that says Lex, Lex Express on it. All right, Sorg, take us out. America. Mayhem out, America. Just wait.